It's that time of the year. Your vacation is coming up. You can already hear the beach waves, feel the warm breeze, relax, and think about work. You really, really want it all to work out while you're away. Monday.com gives you and the team that peace of mind. When all work is on one platform and everyone's in sync, things just flow. Wherever you are, tap the banner to go to Monday.com. This show is supported by State Farm. You have insurance for your home, your health, and your car. Why don't you have insurance for your small business? So many small business owners think they don't need or don't even know about small business insurance. Protecting a source of revenue is one thing, but so is protecting all of your hard work and your team members. State Farm agents are all small business owners too, so they know how to help small business owners choose personalized policies that fit their budgets. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Talk to your local agent today. As we gather around the warmth of the holiday season, let's reflect on the profound impact of generosity and kindness. The magic of Christmas lies not only in the twinkling lights and festive decorations, but in the genuine joy that comes from selfless acts of giving. This season, let's be mindful of the importance of embracing the spirit of generosity. Whether through thoughtful gifts, acts of kindness, or lending a helping hand, Our actions can create a ripple effect of positivity that resonates far beyond the holiday festivities. But beware, for this joyous season brings with it a special guest, one who observes our deeds with a discerning eye, the ancient guardian of tradition, who blesses those who work hard and spread kindness with abundance and joy. Yet she watches closely ready to mete out consequences to the lazy and selfish. Let us heed the age-old wisdom and strive to make our homes havens of warmth and love. Work diligently, for she may leave silver coins for those who deserve her blessings. Embrace generosity, for in giving we receive the true magic of the season. May your holidays be filled with the warmth of cherished moments the glow of compassion, and the joy of giving. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and a season filled with love, laughter, and the spirit of Frau Perkta's benevolent blessings. Welcome to Freaky Folklore, the podcast where we discover horrifying legends across the world and tell terrifying tales of monsters both ancient and modern. This week, we are discussing Frau Perkta. Some believe she's a goddess, and others believe she's a witch. Maybe she is both, for on one hand she leaves blessings, and on the other she delivers punishment. This show is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network. Find more terrifying tales at EerieCast.com, such as Destination Terror. You can listen to a new episode every week as I take you to horrifying destinations both real and mythical. Be sure to follow us on Spotify or your favorite podcasting service. You can leave an honest review on iTunes, too. The more we get, the more we grow, and hopefully the more monsters we can explore. You can now find Freaky Folklore videos on YouTube as well. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram for information on future episodes. The freshly fallen snow crunched beneath the pressure of bare feet, the frigid winter air stinging with an icy bite. Numbness had long claimed dominion over the exposed flesh, rendering it insensitive to the harsh cold. The skin, once a canvas of pale hues, now bore the ominous mark of a frostbitten descent, turning an unsettling shade of black. Each step left an imprint on the pristine snow, a haunting trail of footprints that painted a grim picture of the desperate journey through the wintry landscape. The silence of the snow-laden woods amplified the crunching sound. The only audible witness to the struggle against the unforgiving chill. 
As the bare feet continued to press on, the icy terrain exacted its toll. The extremities devoid of warmth and life-sustaining circulation succumbed to the relentless grasp of winter. The ominous blackness creeping across the skin served as a macabre reminder of nature's indifference to the vulnerability of exposed flesh in its frozen embrace. The winter winds whispered through the skeletal branches, carrying with them a mournful tale of isolation and desperation. The bearer of the numbed feet, lost in the desolate expanse, pressed forward, a spectral figure against the white canvas of the landscape. Greta emerged from the cozy warmth of her secluded cottage, nestled in the heart of the forest. The crackling fire was left behind as she stepped onto the snow-draped porch, the chill of the wintry air biting at her cheeks. In her hands, she gripped a worn kitchen rug, intent on shaking away the accumulated dust. As Greta vigorously shook the rug, tiny specks of dust flew into the cold air making a little dance in the quiet forest. The snowy trees were like guards, covered in winter snow, and their branches made long shadows on the white carpet. The rug moving back and forth was the only thing disturbing the peaceful moment. In the final act of dust removal, Greta's gaze wandered to the untouched landscape surrounding her cottage. It was then that she spotted a figure emerging from the dense cluster of trees. A woman, stumbling as if propelled by some unseen force. The forest seemed to reluctantly release its hold on the intruder, who tumbled face first into the thick, untouched snow. A gasp caught in Greta's throat, and she instinctively clutched the rug closer to her chest. The woman lay sprawled in the fresh snow, a stark contrast to the serene surroundings. Greta, momentarily frozen, squinted to get a clearer view. The woman, obscured by winter's veil, began to stir. Slowly, she pushed herself up from the snowy embrace, revealing a disheveled form, draped in tattered garments. As the woman turned to face Greta, the lines of exhaustion and desperation etched deep into her features. Without hesitation, Greta rushed forward, her concern overcoming any apprehension. Good heavens, are you okay? What brings you out here in such a state? She exclaimed, her voice cutting through the stillness of the wintry woods. The woman, her eyes reflecting a mix of weariness and gratitude, struggled to articulate words. Greta extended a helping hand, pulling the disoriented woman to her feet. The snow clung to her clothing leaving a trace of her tumultuous journey through the forest. Come inside, please. You must be freezing. I'll stoke the fire. Greta insisted, guiding the stranger toward the warmth of her cottage. The mystery of the woman's unexpected arrival lingered in the air, the forest itself seeming to guard its secrets as the door creaked shut behind them, enclosing the newfound mystery within the cozy confines of Greta's secluded home. Once inside the cottage, Greta ushered the weary woman toward the flickering warmth of the hearth. The fire danced in the fireplace, casting a golden glow that chased away the shadows of the forest. The stranger gratefully accepted Greta's hospitality, her frozen limbs slowly thawing in the cozy haven. Seated by the fire, The woman's gaze wandered around the quaint interior of Greta's cottage. The walls were adorned with aged tapestries, depicting scenes from the forest, and the air was infused with the comforting aroma of burning wood. Greta, still holding the rug, offered a kind smile. I'm Greta, she said, extending a hand toward the stranger. The woman, her eyes reflecting a mixture of gratitude and weariness, replied, I'm Freya. Thank you for saving me from the cold. Greta nodded warmly. You're welcome, Freya. Now let's get you warmed up. You must be freezing. Greta led Freya to a comfortable chair by the fire and gestured toward a woven blanket draped over the back. 
Wrap yourself in this. I'll get you something hot to drink and a bowl of soup. As Greta bustled around the cozy kitchen, the aroma of a hearty soup began to fill the air. Freya, wrapped in the warm embrace of the blanket, watched Greta's movements with a mixture of gratitude and curiosity. The crackling fire provided a comforting backdrop to the quiet exchange. Soon Greta returned with a steaming bowl of soup and a mug of hot tea. Here, Freya. It's a simple broth, but it should help warm you from the inside, and this tea will soothe your senses. Freya accepted the offerings with a nod, the warmth from the soup and the tea gradually seeping into her chilled body. As she sipped the comforting broth, Greta couldn't help but notice the subtle signs of exhaustion etched on Freya's face. As Freya sipped the hot tea and savored the warmth of Greta's cottage, a contemplative silence settled between them. Greta, her eyes filled with compassion, gently encouraged Freya to share more about her journey. With a deep breath, Freya began to unravel a harrowing tale of betrayal and survival. I was robbed, Freya confessed, her voice carrying the weight of a bitter truth. Left to freeze in the unforgiving snow, I thought my last moments had come, but something within me refused to surrender to the cold. I pressed on. Greta listened attentively, her kind eyes reflecting both empathy and concern. She offered a supportive nod, silently acknowledging the pain Freya carried within her words. The fire crackled in the background, casting a warm glow that framed the solemn exchange. As Freya continued to recount her story, she couldn't help but observe Greta more closely. She watched how Greta moved about the cottage with a natural grace, tending to the fire, arranging the tapestries, and ensuring every corner exuded a comforting warmth. It became evident to Freya that Greta's generosity wasn't merely a fleeting act but a genuine reflection of her character. I've never encountered such kindness before, Freya admitted, her gaze lingering on the cozy surroundings. Your home is a sanctuary, Greta, a haven in the midst of the wilderness. Greta, humbled by Freya's words, smiled warmly. I believe in the importance of extending warmth and hospitality to those in need, it's the way of the forest, a shared understanding among those who dwell here. My late husband, Richard, built this cabin many years ago. He loved the forest, and that love was contagious. This cabin is all I have left of him now. Greta went on to explain how she had met Richard all those years ago. He was a young widow at the time, raising two small children. He had a son and a daughter. Greta fell instantly in love with them both and never saw the need to have more children because they made her heart feel whole. When Robert, the oldest, started secondary school, he began having behavioral problems. So Richard and I decided to move out here to homeschool him and his younger sister, Lena. Richard found this beautiful 50 acres of forest and built this quaint home. She explained. Her eyes told of happy memories, but Freya saw sadness in them as well. Where are the kids now? Freya asked gently. Oh, well, they both live in the city with their families. Robert owns a couple of small businesses, and Lena is a nurse. They have such lovely families. They haven't visited in a while. They were cross with me for not selling when their father died. The land is worth a lot of money now, you see, but I'm not ready to let it go. Freya could see the part of the story she was leaving out. She could read it in the sadness in Greta's eyes. The grown children wanted the money the land would bring. But I am so excited, Greta suddenly blurted out. They are coming here for Christmas. I do hope they bring the children. Freya made the decision immediately. The two grown children wouldn't be the only one paying Greta a visit for Christmas. 
As the night unfolded, Greta offered Freya a sparse set of warm clothes, ensuring she would be comfortable during her stay. The fire continued to cast dancing shadows on the walls, creating an atmosphere of shared solace. In the quiet moments before sleep claimed them, Freya lay in the borrowed bed, contemplating the kindness she had encountered. From the depths of her heart, she marveled at the genuine goodness within Greta, a goodness that illuminated the cottage like a beacon in the wintry night. Unbeknownst to Greta, Freya's observations extended beyond the physical realm. From her position, she peered into the essence of Greta's character, glimpsing a compassionate soul. As the howl of a wolf pierced the night air, dozens of eyes watched the cabin from the forest, waiting for their master to return with a verdict. Was the inhabitant of the cabin worthy of a blessing, or would punishment be doled out? As dawn painted the sky in hues of soft pink and gold, Greta stirred from her slumber. The cozy cottage welcomed the morning with a gentle warmth, and a sense of serenity lingered in the air. Greta rose, her steps carrying her toward the bedroom where Freya had spent the night. To her surprise, Greta discovered a silver coin nestled in her slipper, a glimmering token left behind as if by unseen hands. Puzzled, she inspected the small treasure, its presence a mysterious whisper in the quiet morning. As Greta turned her attention to the bed where Freya had slept, she found it empty, the quilts neatly arranged, as though undisturbed by the night's rest. The room, though still infused with the warmth of the fire, bore no trace of the visitor who had sought refuge. A mix of emotions played across Greta's face, gratitude for the silver coin and a sense of loss for the fleeting companionship that had warmed her home. She moved to the window, gazing out into the wintry woods, half expecting to catch a glimpse of Freya disappearing among the trees. Yet the forest stood in silence, its secrets guarded by the ever-present shadows. Freya had vanished without a trace, leaving only the silver coin as a tangible reminder of her mysterious presence. This show is supported by State Farm. Insurance is a part of any solid financial plan. Making sure you have the important things in life covered is one of the best ways to give yourself a little breathing room when things go awry. It's important to protect not only your business, but yourself as a business owner and all current and future team members. State Farm agents know what it takes to run and protect a small business because State Farm agents are all small business owners and they live and work in your community. So they're deeply attuned to what's happening with other small businesses in your market. If you have a small business and are interested in making sure you're protected, reach out to your local State Farm agent to learn more about what you need. They'll help you find the right policy at the right price for your business. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Talk to your local agent today. This episode is sponsored by June's Journey. Attention all mystery lovers. Dive into the captivating world of June's Journey, the hidden object game that will awaken your inner detective. Join June Parker on her quest to uncover the shocking truth behind her sister's murder in the glamorous 1920s. I'm a couple of chapters in, and I love unlocking new pieces to the mystery after each hidden item search. The beautifully detailed scenes, from New York's finest parlors to the charming sidewalks of Paris, make the experience truly immersive. As you progress, you'll also get to build and customize your very own island estate, complete with stunning gardens and luxurious buildings. Gather compelling evidence decipher cleverly hidden clues, and unravel the dark secrets of the Parker family. Each twist and turn will keep you on the edge of your seat, eager to crack the case. Cooperate or compete against other players in the detective club, and you'll even get a chance to play in a detective league to test your skills. Are you ready to jump back in time, detectives? Download June's Journey for free today in iOS and Android. The holiday season is a time full of joy and laughter, 
time spent with friends and family, sharing the Christmas spirit, and a surprisingly good time to tell scary stories. The duality of Christmas refers to the coexistence of contrasting elements within the holiday traditions and folklore. Christmas is often seen as a time of joy, generosity, and celebration, symbolized by cheerful decorations, gift-giving, and festive gatherings. However, beneath the surface of this joyful facade, there are elements of darkness, mystery, and even fear in various cultural traditions and legends associated with the season. From ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, to a horned, hoofed, furry beast that may or may not be Santa's evil twin, there's an abundance of scary Christmas stories to be told. But one of the oldest is the legend of Frau Perkta. Known by some as a witch, others as a goddess, and even more disturbing is her moniker, the Belly Slitter. Frau Perkta has been scaring children, possibly longer than Santa has been leaving them gifts. So you may be wondering, depending on what part of the globe you're from, who is Frau Perkta? First of all, the origin of Frau Perkta can be quite confusing, as the tale twists and changes from town to town, region to region. But one thing is for certain, she comes around after dark, during the 12 days of Christmas. Let me start from the beginning and tell you everything I have learned. Frau Perkta has been portrayed as a witch, a goddess, and even as a belly-splitting punisher. Wait, what? Yes, you heard right. A belly-splitter. But I'll save that for later. Frau Perkta, also known as Perkta or Berkta, is a prominent figure in Alpine folklore with a complex history potentially one of the most ancient supernatural entities linked to the winter holidays. She may have influenced stories involving Krampus, St. Nicholas, and their associated customs. Scholars of folklore have debated this matter, with some asserting mentions of her in German regions as early as the 10th century, while others argue that her name and themes are intricately tied to the Epiphany Feast suggesting a non-pre-Christian origin. Despite her age, her impact on holiday traditions has been substantial, making her a noteworthy subject in any exploration of early Christmas or winter solstice folklore. Frau Perkta is often depicted as having a dual nature, both benevolent and malevolent. In some versions of stories told about her, she is a beautiful, kind goddess, who rewards hardworking individuals, while in others she can be a more sinister figure, punishing the laziness of those who violate cultural taboos. Her appearance varies across different stories as well. She may be portrayed as a beautiful and radiant woman, a haggard and ugly crone, or even as a spectral figure. Sometimes she is depicted with two faces, one beautiful and one ugly, and her mood when you meet her may determine which one she wears. Frau Perkta is often associated with garment, with white being a symbol of purity and red representing blood. Some traditions say that she rewards those who have worked hard with silver coins and treats, while those who have been lazy may find their belongings stained with blood. Because of her dual nature, she is both able to reward the well-behaved and punish the naughty, and she shows concern with the moral education of children. She also has an interest in those who were responsible for spinning flax. She is said to be accompanied by followers, almost always children, beings that are not dead or undead, but are mortal and immortal. Spirits of children, animals, or even ghouls and mischief makers they are almost always in a malicious frenzy, and even though they aren't usually seen, they are almost always heard as they run through the mountains and villages. Frau Perkta and her crew of ghostly spirits roam the countryside during midwinter and look for homes to enter during the 12 days of Christmas, from Christmas Day through Epiphany, 
Twelfth Night To see who has worked hard and who has been lazy. The twelfth night is considered her festival night, the day of the Feast of the Three Kings. She is said to be even more active on this day. Upon entering each house, Frau Perkta already knew who had worked hard throughout the year, and they would be surprisingly rewarded with a coin found in their shoe the next morning. For those who had been lazy or hadn't quite done enough, they would have their bellies sliced open while they slept. She would then remove their insides and replace them with dirt, pebbles, straw, and garbage. There are ways to avoid her wrath, such as St. John's wart, that can be burned or hung inside and around the home. This is said to ward off the bad luck that she brings. On Christmas Day and the Twelfth Day, you can leave out a spoonful from each dish from the Yuletide Feast, by the gate, path, or even on the roof, as an offering. Frau Perkta had different ways of punishing people, not just cutting open their bellies. If someone was too curious or disrespectful, she might curse them with a year of blindness. If spinners worked on days they weren't supposed to, she'd boil them alive. She could also bring a whole year of bad luck to an individual or even an entire village. She was so powerful that she could crush children to death just by stepping on them. However, her most feared method was using a sickle, a knife, or scissors to cut open and gut her victims. What made this even more sinister was that she would sew the victims back up with an iron needle. This way, when someone found the body the next morning, there would be no sign of foul play, and it would seem like a peaceful death during the night. Like any old tale, it's the stories we hear by a cozy fire or from our parents as we're snug in bed that carry the legend across generation and beyond different places. There are several regional variations of stories about Frau Perkta, and the tales can differ significantly. One common theme, however, involves Frau Perkta's encounter with a lazy or dishonest farmhand. Here's a simplified version of one such story. Once upon a time, in a small village nestled in the Alps, there lived a farmhand named Hans. Hans was known for his laziness and lack of dedication to his work. Despite the warnings from the elders about Frau Perkta's watchful eye during the 12 days of Christmas, Hans continued to neglect his duties on the farm. As the winter nights grew colder, Frau Perkta's presence was felt in the village. On an especially dark and frosty night, Hans decided to take a shortcut through the woods. After spending his evening in a local tavern, instead of tending to his chores. As he trudged through the snow-covered forest, Hans stumbled upon a mysterious figure cloaked in white. It was Frau Perkta herself. The atmosphere grew tense as she confronted Hans about his lazy ways and negligence. In a stern voice, she warned him of the consequences of his actions during the sacred time of the Twelve Days. Ignoring her warnings, Hans continued his careless behavior. On the last night of the twelve days, Frau Perkta appeared before him again. This time, she decided to teach him a lesson he would not forget. With a swift motion of her hand, she transformed Hans into a bundle of straw, symbolizing his worthlessness. The next morning, when the villagers found the lifeless bundle of straw in Hans' bed, they realized the severity of Frau Perkta's judgment. The tale of Hans the lazy farmhand turned into straw served as a cautionary story for generations to come. It reminded everyone in the village of the importance of hard work, especially during the sacred 12 days of Christmas, when Frau Perkta watched over their actions. So remember, this holiday season, from the first day of Christmas to the 12th, Frau Perkta may be watching you too. The hum of the SUV carried through the forest, causing Greta to hear its approach long before it arrived in front of the cabin. 
She scurried around the house, making sure everything was nice and tidy before her guests reached the cabin. When the SUV pulled up, Greta was waiting on the front porch with a welcoming smile. Robert stepped out onto the snow-covered drive first and gave Greta a curt wave before heading around to the back of the SUV to retrieve their luggage. She couldn't see Lena, but she heard the door open from the other side of the vehicle, followed by cursing and the crunching of her feet in the snow. As Lena joined Robert behind the vehicle, he dropped her suitcase onto the ground and grabbed his. They spoke quietly for a moment before turning towards Greta, with wide smiles spread across their faces, smiles that didn't quite reach their eyes, but Greta didn't notice. Greta's heart was heavy with disappointment that they had come alone. She was hoping to see the children, but she tried to shake off the disappointment and welcome the two grown children who she had missed dearly. Oh, my darlings, Greta began, tears brimming in her eyes. The sight of you two makes my heart want to burst with joy. She embraced Lena first, wrapping her arms tightly around her. Richard stepped up next and accepted the warm hug from his stepmother. You look tired, mother. You shouldn't be out here in the cold. Robert scolded her as Greta grimaced at the formal title. It had been a long time since Robert had been that little boy who yelled, Mama! across the house when he needed help with his math or a kiss goodnight. Well, come in where it's warm, Greta invited. I have rabbit stew on the stove. Your favorite, Lena, she said with a wink toward her stepdaughter. Maybe when I was eight, Lena grumbled beneath her breath. Sounds lovely, mother, she followed with, loud enough for Greta's ears. As they entered the cabin, where they had grown up, they took note that not much had changed. Greta had even put all of the old decorations on the Christmas tree, which was sitting in the corner by the fireplace, the same as it had been every Christmas. It was all lost on Lena and Robert. They found the cabin, the furnishings, the decorations, and the tree, outdated and ugly. Greta led them to the living room, where the crackling fire added a cozy ambience to the rustic surroundings. The scent of rabbit stew wafted from the kitchen, and Greta gestured for them to make themselves at home. As they settled in, Greta couldn't help but observe the subtle tension in the air. The familiar cabin, once a haven for shared family moments, now seemed to echo with unspoken expectations and unresolved conflicts. Lena and Robert exchanged glances, their smiles masking deeper emotions. Over dinner, conversation flowed awkwardly, punctuated by polite inquiries about each other's lives. Greta, sensing the underlying tension, tried to steer the discussion toward happier memories. Recollections of their childhood the building of the cabin, and the joys of past Christmases. After the meal, they gathered around the fireplace, the flickering flames casting shadows on the walls adorned with memories. Robert cleared his throat, and a knot of dread suddenly formed in the pit of Greta's stomach. Mother, Lena and I would like to talk to you about something very important. He said with a nervous edge to his faked confidence. Okay, you know you can talk to me about anything, she encouraged him with her warm smile. Well, Robert began, we want, we would like, Lena, impatient and annoyed by his stuttering, interrupted, we think it's time to discuss selling the place and moving you closer to town where we can look after you. Greta hung her head, hiding the hurt in her eyes. She had been afraid this was the true reason for their visit. Mama, Robert began again, trying a softer approach. We want what is best for you. You would even be closer to the kids. But Robert, Lena, she looked from one to the other, pleading for them to understand. This is my home. It's all I have left of your father. I feel that I would die of heartbreak if I were to leave here. Lena, 
obviously the more impatient of the two, made a frustrated huff and reached into her leather handbag. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, she said as she slammed an envelope down on the table in front of Greta. What is this? Greta asked nervously. Lena rolled her eyes. Mother, you're being sentimental. This place is falling apart, and it's not suitable for someone of your age to live alone. We found a lovely retirement community in town, and you'll have all the amenities you need. Greta's eyes flickered with a mixture of sadness and defiance. I've managed just fine on my own, and I have the forest to keep me company. I'm not ready to leave. Robert sighed, realizing that convincing Greta would be more challenging than he anticipated. Mom, think about the future. What if something happens? You're isolated out here, and we need the money. There it was. The truth was out, stabbing Greta's heart like an icy cold dagger. I understand your need, but this is my decision to make, Greta insisted, folding the power of attorney documents with a determined resolve. I appreciate what you're trying to do. I truly do. But I won't be swayed by financial concerns or convenience. This is my home and I intend to stay. Lena stood up abruptly, frustration evident in her expression. Well, mother, we've said our piece. The offer stands. We can do this the easy way, but the offer won't last forever. And after that, we can do it the hard way. We hope you reconsider for your own sake. With that, Lena stormed out of the room leaving Greta and Robert in an awkward silence. Robert sighed again, torn between loyalty to his mother and the financial concerns he felt for himself and his sister. I'll talk to Lena, he promised Greta. But please, Mom, think about what we've said. We just want what's best for all of us. Greta nodded, her eyes misty with a mixture of hurt and determination. As the bedroom door closed behind Robert, she was left alone staring into the fireplace with the memories of a life well lived, but now overshadowed by the uncertainties of the future. Greta sat alone in the dim living room, the crackling fire casting dancing shadows on the walls that once echoed with laughter and the warmth of family. The weight of her children's intentions hung heavy in the air, and a deep sense of heartbreak settled over her. Tears welled up in Greta's eyes as the realization sank in. The two people she loved most in this world were willing to force her from her own home for their own gain. The cabin, with its creaking floors and aged tapestries, held the cherished memories of a life shared with Richard, a life that had weathered the storms of joy and sorrow. The love and dedication she had poured into this sanctuary the haven where Richard's spirit seemed to linger in the very walls, now faced the threat of being reduced to a mere asset on a financial ledger. Greta's heart ached at the thought that her children, driven by their own motives, were willing to sever the ties that bound her to the only place that felt like home. She clutched the folded power of attorney documents in her hands, the symbol of betrayal that cut deeper than any physical wound. As the night grew colder, another visitor was on her way to Greta's home. She had visited before and had vowed to return to check in on Greta to make sure her children were behaving. Greta, lost in her thoughts and unaware of the approaching presence, sat by the flickering fireplace. The subtle crackling of burning wood provided a backdrop to her contemplations while the power of attorney documents lay on the table like a weight on her heart. As the stress of the evening, and maybe with the help of a little magic, Greta drifted off to sleep. Taking on the same appearance as her earlier visit as Freya, resembling a young woman, she entered the cabin with an ethereal grace. Silently, she moved through the shadows, her footsteps masked by the crackling of the fire 
Her first destination was Lena's room. The door creaked open as she entered, revealing a scene that appalled her. Lena's room was in disarray. The suitcase lay open. Its contents spilled out haphazardly. Snack wrappers adorned the floor, like confetti from a careless celebration. The once tidy and welcoming space now resembled a chaotic aftermath. The mystical visitor, maintaining her guise as the young woman Freya, shook her head disapprovingly. It was evident that Lena's disregard for order mirrored a deeper lack of respect for the sanctity of the cabin. The visitor couldn't help but feel a tinge of disappointment at the disregard for the space that held so much sentimental value for Greta. Quietly, she left Lena's room and moved through the cabin with purpose. Her next destination were Robert's quarters. As she approached Robert's room, she heard muted voices. Peering through the slightly ajar door, she saw Robert and Lena engaged in a whispered conversation. Their expressions conveyed a mix of tension and urgency. We need to convince her to sign the papers, Lena whispered in a hushed tone. Once she signs, we can sell this place and finally get the money we deserve. The visitor's eyes narrowed, and she felt a surge of indignation. The siblings' true intentions were laid bare, confirming Greta's suspicions from her earlier visit of their ulterior motives. The visitor silently entered Robert's room unseen. The disarray in his space mirrored the chaos in Lena's. Clothes were strewn about, and the room lacked the tidiness that once defined the cabin's atmosphere. She waited silently in the shadows for Robert and Lena to go to bed. Once they were asleep, she began to change into her more vengeful, terrifying form. Her skin began to sag and wrinkle. Her nose grew long and hooked. Her hair turned wiry and gray. As she stepped out of the shadows, she waved her hand, and Lena's bedroom window swung open. Small hands pulled tiny pale bodies up through the windows. The child spirits that followed her poured into the room. They gathered around Lena's bed. One covered her mouth, while several others held her down. Lena awoke, and she tried to scream. And she tried to struggle, but it was no use. She watched as the witch pulled a long, sharp knife from beneath her skirt. One of the small, pale spirits raised Lena's gown, just enough to uncover her belly. The witch placed the sharp tip of the knife between the arch in her rib cage, and began to slice until it reached Lena's pelvic bone. Warm blood tickled as it flowed down Lena's sides, but still, she couldn't move. She lay there as the tiny hands reached inside her, pulling out her intestines and then her stomach. She was silent and still by the time they began to replace them with the garbage from her floor. Her skin began to grow cold when the needle to sew her shut entered her flesh. Once the ritual was complete, the old crone, followed by her little spirit minions, moved on to Robert's room, where they repeated the same ritual. Greta's two grown children would no longer disrespect her or her home. Meanwhile, Greta remained in a peaceful slumber, unaware of the macabre activities that had transpired within her cherished home. Greta woke up to a heartbreaking scene in her cozy cabin. Her grown children, Robert and Lena, lay lifeless in their beds. The consequences of their selfish actions had caught up with them. The cabin, once filled with family love, now held a silent sadness. Frau Perkta, the ancient guardian, had visited in disguise. Her judgment was swift. The consequences mirrored the children's neglect and betrayal. As the snow fell outside, Greta faced the reality of her children's demise. The lessons of generosity and kindness had been overshadowed by their pursuit of personal gain. 
The once happy cabin now stood as a reminder that our choices shape our destiny, especially during the season of giving. Thank you for listening to Freaky Folklore, the podcast about mankind's horrifying legends and myths. Don't forget to follow Freaky Folklore on Spotify and iTunes. If you can, leave the show an honest review on iTunes to help us grow. Freaky Folklore is part of the EerieCast Podcast Network, the home for listeners who love to feel scared. Go to EerieCast.com to find other terrifying podcasts, such as Destination Terror, hosted by me, Carmen Carrion. If you would like to submit an encounter or suggestions for future episodes, you can email them to carmencarrion at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Until next time, stay safe out there, because this world is a strange one. Thanks to State Farm for supporting this show and helping our listeners protect their businesses and lives. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Talk to your local agent today.